What's going on? This is Alex USA Days. Uh, so before I start with the topic of the video, I would like to make a quick announcement. I'm thinking of creating a webinar live session where I'm going to talk about my resume and I'm going to talk about how I structure my resume and I'm going to talk about how I work with LinkedIn and how I do a job search. I'm not sure if this topic is interesting or not, but if I'm going to invest in it, I'll probably going to charge a couple hundred dollars for a two hour session with like question and answers that's going to be live uh, on the material created. If this is something that is interesting for you, there is an email in the description to this video. So you can just send me, hey, I'm interested. So I'll start building a list. If I'll have enough people, I'll probably work on something like that. And once I have the webinar, after that, probably I'll make it public, but then it will be not just a live session recording, but this will be only accessible for the people that are uh, uh, support me through Patreon, right? So that's the idea. Uh, let me know if this is something that interests you. Again, there's an email in the description to this video. And now let's get to today's topic. Today, we're going to talk about uh, zero bug policy. So some people mistakenly think that zero bug policy means that you will create products that have uh, zero bugs or no bugs at all. So this is not what it is because essentially it's impossible to create product that will have no issues. Even if you will write perfect code and you will uh, minimize the amount of bugs, when you release the codes, environment around the code will keep on changing. You will have new devices. Uh, you will have new technologies. Everything gonna move and uh, you know get updated. So essentially, it will introduce new issues. So there's no such thing as a bug-free software. And you can have an unlimited resources and keep on investing in QA. You're not gonna have a product that is absolutely bug-free because it's virtually impossible. Um, when you're working on a software, on a product, what you want to strive to have is product that is better than your competitors. So if you do some little research on some metrics around what is the uh, defect escape rate across the United States, you will find it somewhere under 10%. So what you want to strive for to capture at least 90% of bugs, uh, the industry standard, like for the great uh, escape rate would be around 4%. So only 4% of defects will get into production while everything else will get captured before that and fixed. Uh, so if uh, zero bug policy uh, is not having a software that has no issues, what is it? Essentially, it's an approach where you release software and keep on working on features only after you fixed all the bugs. Uh, if we think about the classical model of how you deal with bugs, you will have to prioritize the bugs. So you'll have blockers, you'll have uh, important like production bugs, you'll have major, minor and trivial bugs. So anywhere from like P0, the most important priority to P1, P2, P3 and so forth. Um, now, then you will have those bugs piled up somewhere in your backlog, then you will eventually address them. Some of them will be never addressed, but it's possible that, you know, you still focus on release and feature first without fixing the bugs and what essentially this will create uh, this will create a lot of technical depth and this will create a buggy overall uh, product that will impact the quality and probably you know as the issues will pile up if they're not timely addressed also going to impact uh, satisfaction of your customers and maybe drive some business away so with the zero bug policy, the approach that you create here, um, you only push new features and new code into production uh, that is related to like the features once you resolved all of the bugs. So essentially you have only two states for the bug. Is it a defect? Uh, it has to be worked on right away. Uh, unless there's not a defect being fixed. And if it's no defect, uh, that means, you know, you don't want to fix it at all. So this is something else. Uh, so in order to go with that approach, you have to establish a couple of things here. So first, you want your QA uh, to be as uh, soon as possibly involved into the development process. And what that means, even though QA will not gonna uh, create code, they will have to review the acceptance criteria and work uh, with uh, developers and product uh, managers on the features in the pipeline. So they have to get involved early on, analyze the acceptance criteria, analyze what kind of testing uh, can be created around those uh, acceptance criteria and what are the limitations, right? 
So that will be the first step. Uh, the second step, you will have to clearly identify uh, what is considered a bug because sometimes issues that are reported not really issues there's just functionality that doesn't exist or you know it goes outside of the acceptance criteria that were previously established so that means customers aren't happy with something they say okay it's not working as i wanted it to work but then when you go back to the actual acceptance criteria you will see that you know this is never was something they wanted or you know communicated so then this will be classified not as a bug but as a feature request uh, other things might get classified as maybe obsolete or outdated, so they will never be addressed. Uh, you know, maybe uh, this version of the product is no longer supported or the specific feature. And even though the customers will complain that, okay, uh, this is not working, uh, you will just have to communicate, okay, this is not actually, if you want it to work, we will have to put it as a new uh, feature, but essentially it's not a bug because we're no longer support this thing. Uh, this also have to come uh, with a definition of supported environments. So some things that maybe work in Chrome might not work on, uh, I don't know, in Firefox or Safari. So you have to be very specific what environments you do support. And if something comes out of your environment, it's not supported. This was also not gonna be a defect, not an issue that's gonna be like a feature request to support a certain environment. Okay, so once you have QA involved uh, early in the feature creation, and once you clearly established what the bug is, then uh, you'll have to kind of foster and promote uh, the policy that quality is everyone's responsibility, not only QA engineers, but everyone think about the quality first. And we're not going to push any code uh, that related to the feature building until we treat all of the issues and fix them all, uh, the one that we have established, right? Uh, what the, this will do for you, maybe, you know, it's going to be a little bit harder to communicate dates to the customers when something's going to be completed because the issues that pop up will move those dates and push those dates. But uh, this essentially will create a product that is a lot more robust, uh, that has a lot less technical depth. And um, when you will work on new features, you will be sure that there's nothing else that is sitting there kind of breaking the customer product and uh, expectations are pretty high. So when you release new feature and something is broken you can immediately revert back to the working uh, stable relatively bug free uh, product uh, fix the issue and then do the release right so i think that is the most of it let me know if you have any questions in regards of um, zero bug policy this is something that has to be part of the culture. This is something that has to be clearly communicated and established across all teams. Uh, you want to also have some metrics around it. You want to use the right tools to make sure you measure. Uh, you want to categorize uh, issues and you want to measure how fast they're being addressed and you want to overall uh, measure the qualities uh, of your product. Uh, another thing that this approach is gonna be different from place to place. Of course, it, it can be tweaked and kind of uh, adapted to each industry each product uh, but uh, one thing that you want to do is work on the continuous improvement so you want to review the process make adjustments gather feedback uh, that's going to be something that you have to be working on continuously but uh, the huge benefit of uh, zero bug policy is that your quality of the product will most likely you know gonna remain on a very very high level uh, while if you keep on doing the old method or the regular approach where you strive to uh, release as many features as possible, you're build building technical depth and you kind of pile on up bugs and then you have to play catch up with like stabilization sprints. Uh, that approach will degrade your performance and your uh, your quality of a product over time. With the regular approach, you will always have to go back fix things up stabilize them and in the process you you do you also want to make sure you don't introduce any new issues because if you fix too many issues at one time and address piled up issues um, multiple issues at one time it's very highly 
possible that you're going to introduce other issues while fixing the existing ones. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions on that. Please share what do you do in your company if you actually do zero bug policy, how it is working out for you. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. This was Alex USA Days and uh, bye bye.